We're gonna divide this dough in half, and we're gonna use the tool that the Persian soldiers would have had. Okay. Hey there, I'm Sola Aweli, and this is Ancient Recipes with Sola. In each episode, we're gonna take a dish you may recognize and attempt to recreate one of the oldest versions of it to ever exist. It's a little history, it's a little cooking, and it's a whole lot of me. What's not to love? Uh, so in this episode, we're gonna try and make one of the oldest versions of pizza to ever exist. Now I know modern day pizza has its origins based in Italy, but the history of pizza goes back much further than that. I mean, if you start to break it down, pizza really is just a type of flatbread, right? And many cultures throughout history have had their own type of flatbread pizza, long before the cheesy saucy version we've all come to know and love. So there are a lot of potential origins for today's pizza, but to be honest, it's most likely a mix of multiple different recipes. But one of the coolest versions was made by Persian soldiers on their shields. Yeah, on their shields. So we're gonna try and take this shield to try and recreate that ancient pizza. I've never cooked on a shield, so here goes nothing. Okay, today we're gonna be making a traditional Persian flatbread, non e barberry, using ingredients that would be available to the Persian soldiers back in 6th century BCE. Now, maybe, maybe they would have mixed in a helmet like this, but, you know, they could have also mixed in a bowl. So we're gonna go with a bowl and we're gonna top it with their favorite ingredients, dates and cheese. So for the dough, I've got whole wheat flour. I'm gonna mix that up with some salt and beer yeast. Now, they wouldn't have had the kind of commercial yeast that we have today, but they definitely would have used something like a beer yeast. Apparently the Sumerians were a big fan of beer. Or more likely, a lump of old sourdough or maybe like a sourdough starter. But the beer yeast is definitely something that they've had around. So I'm just mixing that together. We're just kind of whisk whisking it up. And then I'm gonna add in the water and we're gonna knead. Okay. So I'm gonna do like a, a pour for finger whisk. You know, finger whisk is very useful. There we go. This water is just a little bit warm, which is gonna help you know, get that beer yeast doing its thing. I can already smell it smells like beer. So I think this bread's gonna have a really interesting flavor. I've never used beer yeast before, so I'm really interested to see what this tastes like. And whole wheat flour is a little bit thirstier than all purpose. So we've got a good bit of water in here. Okay, so this is coming together into a really nice dough. Once everything is like moist, mostly moistened, we're gonna switch to a kneading. I have this little bit of dry bits of flour and you could just use your dough to kind of scrape it up, make sure you get all of it. It feels really sticky now, but it's gonna get smoother as I need. So I'm not gonna freak out and add flour, but I have it on standby. The thing with making bread is there's always recipes, but you know, if it's just like a humid day, you're gonna need less water. If it's really dry, you might need more water. So recipes for bread are just like a starting point and it's good to make it a few times so you can get the feel of what the dough is supposed to be like. This is feeling pretty dry, so I'm gonna add just a little sprinkle. A little sprinkle of flour. Rain it down from the heavens. Okay, now I'm getting in there. Kneading bread is hard in a kitchen, so it must have been pretty difficult for the soldiers to do it, like, I don't know, outside in a camp. Soldiers making bread. You gotta eat. You need fuel, you know, for the fight. This is a pretty tight dough, and that's because of the whole wheat flour. I think we got this. I think we're doing it. Kneading the dough until it's nice and smooth is gonna make sure we develop enough gluten so we get in, like, nice, air pockets and bubbles. Like you need gluten, you need gluten to develop in your bread so that when your yeast like burps and bubbles, it can hold on to those bubbles. Okay, look at how smooth our doughs become. Wow, I was just so busy telling you all these bread facts. It just came together. Okay, now we have achieved nice smooth dough development. Now, we're not gonna ignore this shield, cause I can't. So we're gonna proof it on the shield. I'm just gonna oil it up so it doesn't stick. Just a little bit of olive oil, rub it down. 
I'm gonna be generous. I, I spent some time kneading that dough by hand, you know? I don't wanna lose it to the shield. And now I'm gonna just pop it on here, cover it, and we're gonna let it proof for an hour, and then we're gonna form it. <sighs> Was that okay? Okay, all right, so our dough has been proofing for an hour, and now we're gonna portion it. So you can see this, it's gotten a little bit of poof. It's not gonna go crazy because it's not commercial yeast, but there's a little bit of volume and I can just feel that it's a little bit spongy. We know that there's a good bit of air in there. Um, so before we get going, I'm gonna lightly dust this surface. A little bit of flour and we're gonna divide this dough in half. And we're gonna use the tool that the Persian soldiers would have had. Okay. <laughs> okay, so we're, we're gonna divide this in half. So we're gonna have two flatbreads. So authentic. Sword is the way to go here. And I'm just gonna gently deflate each piece and form it into roughly nine inches long and about like five or six inches wide, kind of like a ciabatta. We're going wide flat. So I'm just going to stretch it out with my hands. Nothing too like crazy or precise. They probably didn't have a rolling pin. So fingies are the best tool next to a sword. After a sword, sword is the best tool. So I, they probably didn't have a ruler either. So I'm going to just like eyeball what nine inches feels to me, you know? And then this is going to proof again. We're going to cover this up, and let it rise. I feel like that's, that feels good. It's about nine inches. It's about nine inches long, about six inches wide. It's not perfect, but we're using our hands. And now I'm gonna cover this and let it proof for another half an hour. Now I'm gonna head on over to the stove and we're gonna make the glaze. It's called rumali. And what it does is it's gonna make the crust really shiny, but also it's a really clever way to add some moisture to the dough. A lot of modern bread ovens inject steam into it, so you get a really good poof. We're used to poofy bread these days, but back then when you didn't have those things, you had to figure out ways to add moisture to the bread so that it could rise before setting, and you get more, you get more fluff city. All right, so the soldiers would have probably built a fire and then cooked the pizza, the flatbread, right on top of that fire. But for safety reasons, we're gonna do it in an oven, so I'm gonna preheat my shield in a hot oven to get us started. So I'm gonna mix this up and we're gonna simmer it until it just thickens and coats the back of the spoon. And right now our shield is just preheating. So it's gonna be kind of like, hopefully like a pizza stone. So as soon as we pop it on there, we're gonna get a nice little poof. When you're cooking bread, it's all about that initial poof because after the bread has been in the oven for a few minutes, the crust starts to set. So you're not gonna, it'll stop, it'll stop poofing, you know? So you need to do everything possible to get that a good initial poof. So preheating your pizza stone, or in this case, a shield, um, adding some moisture. In this case, we're gonna use this glaze, rumali, but I've seen people like throw ice cubes into an oven or have a like pot of steaming water underneath. All of that's just to make sure you can get that initial rise. Oven spring. So some modern glazes, they put a little sugar in there, but back then they wouldn't have had that sugar. So we're gonna try and keep it as traditional as possible. And it's already kind of thickening up. That's cool, right? Pretty much as soon as it boiled, it thickened. And I feel like that is good to go. So I'm gonna turn this off. So by now, our shield is preheated. I'm gonna let this cool just a touch so I can handle it. After forming, this has proofed for another 30 minutes. It doesn't look like a lot happened because we're using beer yeast instead of commercial yeast, but we've got a little bit of leaven, like a little bit of fluff city happening. And they would divide the dough kind of into five sections. I'm gonna just use my finger to put these indentations. And then I'm gonna spread on the glaze and we're gonna throw it on top of that shield. Okay, I'm gonna start by baking just one piece. So I'm gonna keep this guy covered so it doesn't dry out. And now here I'm gonna, I'm gonna just try and smooth on a thin layer of this glaze. I doubt they would have had a brush if this was cool, you can like, you could probably rub it on with your hands, but we just need a thin layer. 
gonna bake up really nice and shiny, add some moisture. I mean, it looks nothing like the pizza I know. My favorite kind of pizza is New York style, but lately I've been like, I've kind of been craving deep dish, even though I don't like it. I don't know. The other night I watched a bunch of YouTube videos on deep dish pizza and every single one I'm like, this looks terrible, but for some reason I really wanna make it. That would be the opposite of this. This is definitely not a deep dish. Stuff, when it comes to like glazing things, like egg wash, frosting a cake, stuff like that when you're smoothing something onto something, I could totally zone out and do it for hours. Like people have had to take cakes away from me because I just kept frosting. I feel like this is one of those things where they're gonna have to be like, that's enough glaze. Let's move on. Every nook and cranny. It's gonna be worth it. It's gonna be shiny. It's gonna have a nice oven spray. Okay, I'm done. Okay, so now I'm gonna quickly transfer this onto my preheated shield. And we're gonna bake this for about, it's gonna bake for a total of 15 minutes, but halfway through we're gonna get in there and give it a flip and then add our toppings. Otherwise, it is not a pizza. Okay. All right, I'll be back in a few. So our pizza's baked for about eight minutes. So it's halfway baked. I'm gonna flip it over and add the toppings, which is the most important part. It's not a pizza without toppings. I'm gonna start with some dates. Now, uh, at first pizza was actually considered like low class food. A lot of the judgy Italian critics thought it was disgusting. But then in 1885, well, I don't remember the year, <laughs> but then Queen Margarita visited Naples and the rumor was that she was sick of eating her royal diet and wanted to try some of the food of the people. And then she tried a pizza with tomatoes, mozzarella, and basil, and it was her favorite. And that's, they say, they say that's where the margarita pizza comes from. So I'm, I'm just ripping these up with my hands because I feel like that's what they would have done, you know? No one's dicing up dates back then. This is gonna add some nice chewy sweetness. And now for the cheese, we're gonna use halloumi. Now they wouldn't have had this exact cheese back then, but this is a descendant of many Middle Eastern cheeses. So we're close, we're in the ballpark. They probably would have had something like feta as well, but that's not as melty. We wanted to go for the halloumi because it's gonna give us a little bit of melt, feel a little bit like the pizza we know today. After I top this with cheese, it's gonna go back in the oven for about another eight minutes, and then it's ready to go, ready to eat. It doesn't look like a pizza I know, but I have a feeling bread and cheese, you can never go wrong. So, back in the oven. All right, now it's time to taste my pizza. They look fantastic. I'm gonna go for this cheesy one, this extra cheesy guy. This is what I'm doing. Okay, bread, Looks dense, but let's see how it tastes. First thought. This is a pretty dense dough compared to pizza today, but it has a lot of flavor. It's really, really nutty, and that goes really well with the sweet, dates and the salty cheese. There's a lot going on. Yeah, I'm getting a lot of that weedy flavor, nice cheese, um, nice saltiness from the cheese. It's a little bit squeaky, which I'm super into. And the dates got a little char in the oven. So they're a little bit caramelized. They're really sticky from warming up. And um, I, I, think it's, I think it's tasty. I think this is something that you should go make. Go make this exactly like this. You don't have to cook on a shield. Although cooking on the shield, was not that difficult. It's really a lot like using a baking sheet. I can totally see how this makes a great thing to cook on, but I would actually make this again, probably exactly the same. It is a dense dough, but there's so much flavor and it goes really well with the dates and the cheese. I mean, all pizza's good. It doesn't matter if it's ancient pizza or modern pizza, all pizza's good, it's cheese and bread. Mm-hmm. This will fill you up, fuel you, ready for battle. I hope you liked watching me make ancient pizza. 
And if you're into it, subscribe. Hit us up in the comments if there's any ancient recipes you want me to try, and I'll see you next time.